I'm out here getting some stuff done in the garden today, but it's getting late, it's time to eat. The ladies are starving. And they're wanting beef and cheddar sandwiches, only unfortunately, I don't have any freaking bread. So I'm gonna have to make some bread. I'm thinking I'm gonna make some hoagies, some homemade hoagies. I don't know, is this something you guys wanna see? <sighs> you know what, screw it. I'm gonna show you how to make some homemade freaking hoagies. I don't know, let's do it. Start with a quarter cup of hot water, two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast, or one package of instant yeast, two tablespoons of sugar, and give it a stir and let that bloom for about five to 10 minutes. And then we're gonna start adding our bread flour here. So I added a cup of bread flour, and then you're gonna add a little bit of water to that and just go back and forth until you get a three and a half to four cups of bread flour and another one cup of hot water plus two tablespoons. Now you're gonna need to do this one at a time, make sure it thoroughly mixes. I'm using a stand mixer here, so this helps a lot because you don't make giant flour clouds. But the idea here is that you let it all come together until it becomes slack. So it's a very sort of wet, sticky, not well combined dough mixture. Now once you get there, you can actually start adding your butter. Now total butter is going to be four tablespoons. You're gonna basically cube that up at one tablespoon per and make it tiny little cubes to make it mix real easy. But once you start mixing that, your dough is actually gonna completely change its texture. Some magic is gonna happen. So it's also gonna start smelling absolutely amazing buttery and yeasty and awesome but you see here my dough is actually starting to smooth out and it's starting to clump and come together and combine into a full dough now notice i'm not running my stand mixer really high here i'm not trying to knead this dough i'm just trying to mix this dough i'm trying to incorporate all the ingredients into this dough. So as soon as it comes together in a, just a loose kind of sticky dough ball, I'm gonna throw that into another bowl that has been greased. In this case, I just use some pan spray. You can use butter, you can use a little bit of oil. This is just gonna make sure as it rises, it's not gonna stick to the sides. This is a no knead dough, which means it's high moisture, which means it's gonna be very, very, very sticky. So I'm gonna cover that in just some plastic and a towel. I'm gonna set that in a warm location for about an hour to two hours, let it double in size. And at that point, I can go ahead and take my towel off, unwrap the plastic, and I can go ahead and do my favorite, favorite, favorite part when it comes to making bread. It's the punch down. Go ahead and shove your fist in that, let all the gas out. Again, it's gonna be sticky, so it's gonna to stick to your hands. So just roll your hand out. Don't just yank it away. That's gonna help with the stickage. It's gonna help you not take a bunch of dough with you on your hands. Roll that out into a lightly, lightly floured cutting board. And make sure to try and use as little flour as you can because additional flour to this dough is gonna dry it out. It's gonna, it's gonna change the texture. We want this to be super light, super fluffy, so we don't go, wanna go adding additional flour into our dough. Now what you see here is I'm cutting this into about six equal pieces. If you really want them to all be exact, grab your scale, we'll weigh each individual dough ball out. I just eyeballed it. This is just for home eating. It's gonna taste good, it's gonna look good, and sometimes I like just different sizes. Give it a nice little rustic home bake feel. So don't think too much about it. If you want it exact, just grab a scale. If not, doesn't matter, just eyeball it. It's absolutely fine, it's not gonna hurt anything. Bake time will be about the same. Now. Take each individual dough ball, roll it out. Again, just make sure it's lightly floured, flatten it out, and we're just gonna do a letter fold, pinching the edges, and then rolling it. So just roll it out flat, 
Take the top part, roll it over about a third, pinch it down. Take the bottom part, roll it over a third, pinch it down, pinch the ends and roll. If you have, if you're going with maybe less than six, if you're going with maybe four or you're going eight or whatever, if you're going less, your rolls are gonna be a little bit bigger. You can roll it with your hands. I didn't really need to do this. It came together in these little, perfect little sized dough nuggets. At this point, we're gonna let this rise again. Now be very, very, very careful here. You're only gonna want it to double in size. So you're gonna leave this for maybe 30 to 45 minutes at most. You can get away with leaving at the first rise a little bit longer. That's going to add flavor to the dough. If you let it rise too long here, what's going to happen is they're going to go flat in the oven because they're actually going to rise in the oven as well. And what happens if you take it out, it's just going to sink. You're going to have a bunch of holes in there. It's just going to sink and it's going to be very sad and whatever. So just 30 to 45 minutes at most, let them double in size. Take a knife here, give it a score. This is important. It gives it a cool aesthetic look, of course, but it's important as the dough is rising in the oven, gases have a place to escape. This is going to prevent your bread loaves, your individual loaves from bursting in the oven. So if you don't do this, you don't necessarily have to do this, but sometimes you can get bursting in certain areas. This just prevents that. So it'll just nicely split on top. Very, very sharp knife is needed here. Otherwise, you're going to just mess up your whole loaf. So use a, use a sharp knife or a razor blade here. Now, very important is to go ahead and add some sort of wash to your dough. I'm using melted butter. Melted butter is going to give you a softer crust, a lighter, softer, rich, buttery flavored crust. I don't want a super hard crust. If you want a nice hard crust, use an egg wash use a whole egg wash or you can use egg white wash if you just want a not as crusty crust but still harder and tougher than butter again i just chose butter because it gives me that rich flavor still protects the crust but it's going to be much softer for my sandwiches now throw that into a 375 degree oven for about half an hour until it nicely turns golden brown. If you really want to test it, grab you a thermometer, stick that into one of the loaves. It should read about 200 degrees. Once it's 200 degrees, it's done. But as long as that crust is nice, it's nicely golden, should be just fine. Look at them. They are absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> you notice mine aren't exactly the same size. That's okay for me. That's okay for me. I don't like thinking too much about it. These are going to be delicious. They're going to be yummy. They are amazing and they're rustic and they are beautiful. And the smell here is just buttery, buttery, buttery baked goodness. Now, the reason I made these is we were making beef and cheddar sandwiches. So be sure to comment below if you want to know the recipe for how I cook the beef. It's real simple. I did it in my Ninja Foodie. You can do it in an Instant Pot. You don't have to do anything crazy. It's really easy but I can definitely share that recipe with you. But look at it, it's amazing. All I did here was toast off my hoagie rolls and I just, oh, oh my God, look how tender that beef came out. Mm, I'm telling you, comment below if you wanna know my recipe. This is chuck roast and it is buttery tender and delicious. But anyway, all I did was toast these bad boys up with butter, added a little bit of garlic aioli that I picked up, store ball. I didn't make it, but it is delicious. Add a little bit of my beef on top, add a little bit of caramelized onions on top of that, and then I just put a little bit of cheddar cheese on it. Let's just, let's just sit and watch this. Mm. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Look at it, look at that tasty goodness. Dang. Mm. Shout out to cheese, by the way. Freaking cheese is delicious. I love cheese, man. Cheese is awesome. Close that up. I just put that back on the pan I used to bake. By the way, pro tip, grab you these silicon bacon mats, man. They are, they are worth it. They are worth it. Anyway, that's just a pro tip. Throw that back in the oven for a little bit. Let that cheese get all melty and yummy. And here we go. Look at that. Oh, beef and cheddar sandwiches on homemade buttery hoagie rolls. Dang. 
That is banging. It is fire. Ooh, throwing that au jus on there. Just some of the droopings. This is some good stuff here. I'm telling you. Comment below if you want this recipe. I'll get it to you. Oof. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. me, delicious. Bacon bread is so easy, man. You got to try it, man. Once you do this, you're not going to want to go to the store and buy any bread. I'm, trust me on that. This stuff is way better. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry, you okay? You okay? <laughs> you okay? Old lady. 